Alright YouTubers, take two, hopefully in the right format this time. We're going to try to do them in the same order. I'll take down the other video in the, in the uh, wrong format. Start here again at the rocket stove. If you've seen uh, my channel and followed me, you know I've done a lot of experiments and uh, had a lot of uh, crazy ideas about rocket stoves, tried a lot of different ways. All those have been learning experiences uh, to build on. So I can build this stove here uh, the best that it could be. Um, and I've got an interesting, unique uh, way I'm going to build this stove. So I'll probably do a series on how I do this stove. And it's going to have a thermal siphoning system on it, as well as a unique uh, burn chamber material. Uh, but enough of that. So. Uh, as I said before, uh, we've seen all these uh, different ways to build for alternative building, and a lot of them we like, and we wanted to incorporate them into the house. And uh, we seen cordwood, and we thought cordwood was really pretty. And uh, so around the door here, around the door bucks in the door, we put uh, cordwood, and it's really not logs. It's just uh, logs that we cut into one-inch thick pieces with a chop saw and uh, we just happened to have some hardwoods out here and we, so we cut a piece of walnut of the dark color and the blonde is a piece of maple and the reds are a piece of cedar and we cut those in one inch chunks and we uh, glued those on there with liquid nails and shot it with a pin nail to stick them on there and stack them up and then after that we basically grouted them like you would a tile with cob and smeared mud and sand in there, mixed together between them. Of course, they got all over the top of it. And when they got all over the top of it, we took 80 grit sandpaper, 60 grit, and sanded them off and got it clean, then took 150 and smoothed that out, and then urethaned it so no moisture would swell it up here to around the door to uh, incorporate some cob or cordwood into the structure. And it's trimmed out with uh, barn wood from the barn here on the place. And then this window here has also uh, got barn wood around, all the way around it. And it's got twisted saplings to hold the uh, curtains back. And the tile is uh, just left over from the house and all the projects. Some of it's from the bathroom floor, some of it's from the shower, some of it's from the backsplash, some of it's from the you know, just different pieces, and I broke it with a hammer and put it in there in a random pattern. And we put this in here as a good height for a window seat. We'll fabricate some cushions here, have the wife put some cushions together so that this will make a nice window seat here. It's set here, it's a nice, nice view. See out across the yard, see the deer in the morning. Of course, this width here is this is how wide the straw bell is, right? It's like 18 inches wide here. So, and then I wanted to point out the uh, back of the cabinets. Back of the cabinets are uh, the tin off of a fort that I built, me and a buddy of mine, when, when I was a kid. So I cleaned it up with a wire brush and painted where the rust spots were really bad and brought it in and used it for the back of my cabinets. And I might change that, but I might just leave it too. Um, the concrete countertops I did for $92. We're an overlay. Uh, I did a video on those uh, because I just, for $92, I thought it was worth doing a video about how you make $92 worth of uh, 18 million foot of uh, countertop. So you might want to check that video out. And uh, backsplash, the same as what was on the uh, was on the shower, and the uh, same as what's on the bottom of the stove on top of the concrete countertops and the uh, last three foot of the countertop is a cutting board that I built and it's three foot long, two inches thick with uh, some chunks on it that was some under counter lights on it there and there's the other cutting boards, get a shot of the other cutting boards up top there uh, my wife has suggested that I start selling some of these cutting boards, and if there's any interest in that, I'd be happy to answer any questions, but 
these are some uh, complicated patterns and some exotic woods and they're more pieces of art than they are cutting board. Good shot of the table as well. That's a table I did inlay and that's uh, that really red wood is a purple heart, the black wood is a winge, this blonde is a maple, uh, the brown dark brown here is a walnut and then the red pegs they're cherry the are cherry dowels in there uh, the back wall is a it's a, really a trace for the water pipes going to the sink and it also insulates them against our in-ground wall here keeping our pipes warm hides them as its primary function and we just distressed pine that we bought painted it different colors and sanded it back off and Got it up there and then put a little urethane over the top of it. Uh, also, uh, we did the door ourselves. These doors start around 400 bucks. And for one that's very nice, you know, it quickly gets in six, seven hundred dollars This is $69 hardware and about $65 worth of lumber uh, and stain. That we just built it out of pine, distressed it, sanded it. You know, you really can't mess it up. You just kind of stop when you when you get it to where you want it. Uh, hardware works really good, slides just as, I have to remind myself to be easy on it because it slides so easy, I see that. It's got a twisted sapling on it for a handle. Uh, I've used those twisted, twisted saplings uh, several times in the, in the house here. And uh, one other thing I, I did that I'm really happy with is, uh, is the light fixture. If you Google, industrial beam kitchen light fixture you'll see that these start around 600 bucks and go up to about a thousand dollars most of them don't have the blue ball mason jars on them or not mason blue ball jars on them i bought ten dollars worth of jars forty dollars worth of uh, hardware to lamp store to get it to attach to the lid like i wanted to and the cord and the black can spray paint. About 65 bucks in that light fixture. I'm uh, really happy with it. And you can see it's got the just some black accent hardware and hung by some black chains. Just some chain that I got from Home Depot and spray painted it black. Yeah. So can't beat that for 65 dollars. Yeah, unplug this and uh, Let's go back and look at the bathroom. It's complete. It was almost complete on the last video, but it's 100% now. Uh, with the mirror and the glass shelf. Get the glass shelf and the mirror here. Yep. And the, the shower is the same stone like I said in the backsplash. Again, I just, uh, we found this uh, glass, this shower, and it had this glass door that operated smooth like we liked it and I asked him to just buy the door glass and I bought the glass and built the shower base and built the shower for the glass door. That's our community bathroom. Small bedroom here off to the side. Uh, rocks around the windows came out of the creek. It's got stained concrete uh, floors in it and the, uh, the dresser in here is uh, I did it myself. It's what you call a crackle paint. It was painted with Elmer's glue and then uh, painted with paint, and it causes it to, to uh, causes it to crack. Just just a small guest bedroom here. Go into the what's going to be the master bedroom. There's another bedroom here. We're sleeping in it. We got our mess in there. No sense of showing it. You know, we're not living here. We're just uh, come down here on the weekends and work on this. And so this is another set of barn doors we made. Or this is what's called bypass hardware, where one door slides over the top of another door. This hardware is a little more expensive than the than the one in the kitchen. I think this is like $129 hardware here for the bypass for the two sets. Yeah. 
So we wanted to add a little color to it, so we took just pine boards and, and built this and painted them individually and then put them together and then distressed it and stained them together and again just stopped where we thought but it was about right. There's still some handles and still some work to be done on them, but anyway, bypass barn doors. Uh, and last, the uh, bathroom. This bathroom we're going to do is a little bit, uh, I don't know if you call it rustic, I don't know what you would call it, country, I'm not sure. But the uh, floor is not uh, barn wood. The floor is a tile that looks like barn wood. It just really looks like barn wood. A lot of people even walk in here and still think it's barn wood. But the, uh, and we built this platform here, and it's again the same kind of stone or rock that was uh, in the shower and on the backsplash, and it's six inch raised. We did it so we could get a, a drain in the bathtub. So we're going to take a large galvanize, that's what this gray metal is called, galvanize. We're going to put a large tank here, uh, four foot long, two foot deep cow trough for a tub on top of this platform. And as a surround, it will have the tin around the tub all the way from the platform to the ceiling. And the tin will go up to this level here around the rest of the bathroom. And above here will be a, a multicolored wood as well. And this small tub here will probably become, hopefully work out to become a sink. So uh, anyway, we've come a long way, got a lot of things done. Probably didn't cover everything. Oh, one other thing I wanted to do is uh, mention was is on this wall, we're going to take a uh, five foot tall one of these. Imagine one of these five foot tall and it's one foot deep, so about this deep. And we're going to hang it on this wall and go from here all the way down to the bottom on this wall here. And then we're going to take wood and put shelves in it, and that'll be where we put our towels and our uh, washcloths and stuff. So, you know. And then, of course, I'll be building probably another door here, or probably another sliding bar door, uh, if my wife has anything to do with it. Okay, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, make sure you check out my countertop video.